Good morning. This is the Crafty Canary with your tip on Tuesday. And today I'm going to show you how I make vegetable broth with vegetable scraps that I've saved throughout a couple of months and put in the freezer um, and my slow cooker. So what I've done is save vegetable scraps like um, onion tops and onion peels and carrot skins. I've got pepper, the insides of peppers and the tops of peppers, the little core of the tomato that you get out when you cut a tomato, all kind of stuff. There's lots of things you can put in here. There are some things you shouldn't. Um, you don't want to put potato peels because they tend to turn it murky and kind of brown. I do not want uh, jalapeno pepper parts in mine because I don't want it to be spicy and hot. But there are many sites online that you can search for uh, types of vegetables to put in vegetable broth and it will tell you things not to put and why because there are some reasons it may affect the taste um, Again, it may affect the color many things I do put in some things that they say not to because it doesn't seem to bother me And it's interesting how the taste is a little bit different every time so I'm gonna go ahead and get started I've got my uh, gallon size bag and I've filled it up over the last couple of months. This one was put in the freezer on November 29th of 2020, and it is today, it is March the 5th, 2020, 21. So about, uh, was it about four months? So that's a pretty long time, but they should still be good. So I'm just gonna dump the whole bag into the slow cooker. Kind of scooch it around there. Now it usually takes about, uh, eight to 10 cups of water to get this full. I've got myself eight cups right here. If that doesn't work, I can fill up more when I get off camera. So I'm gonna fill it up with my water. Now that did not fill it up. I don't know if you can see, it's only to about uh, right here. So it's still got about a good inch and a half that I could fill more. So I'll do that when I get off camera. I'll put more to, you know, only where there's about half an inch left, so almost to the top. And then I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt. Get that salt in there. A teaspoon of peppercorns. So I don't do the uh, ground pepper. I go ahead and do the peppercorns in my broth. And then two bay leaves. One, two. And once I put the rest of the water in here, I'm gonna put the lid on, turn it on low, and I'm gonna go to bed. And I will meet you back here in the morning. See you then. Good morning, I'm back, and it's Saturday now. And when I first got up, I turned the crock pot off and took the lid off so that it could begin to cool down so that I don't risk burning myself when I'm working with the broth and putting it up. But what I have out right now is a great big bowl with a strainer on top of it. And I'll show you what I'm gonna use that for in a minute. But if you have some sort of way of straining out a large quantity um, and into a bowl of some kind. And then I have a measuring cup with a smaller strainer with some cheesecloth. And this is gonna help us not get any of the uh, bits of vegetables or spices or anything into the broth. It's going to be as pure as it can be. So let's get started. First, what I'm going to do is I've got a pair of tongs and I'm going to take out as much of this as I can into the big strainer and bowl and just get lots of it out just to make it easier when I ladle the broth out to get into the smaller strainer with the cheesecloth. So here, I'm just going to get a bunch of the big chunks out. Um, for right now and you can hear some of the juices are running out of there into the bowl and what I'll do at the end is strain that through my cheesecloth and not waste any uh, I might even push it down and squeeze it so I can get as much of the broth out as possible I'm gonna get that out of my way now I ended up putting about two and a half more cups of water in here so it's a total of about ten and a half cups of water so I know I'm probably gonna have about uh, five two cup servings and I have these different types over the years I've bought different types different brands of uh, freezer containers and they each are two cups so uh, usually you know you 
you have 16 ounces of broth. A lot of recipes for soups call for 32 ounces, so I know I can get two of these. Just whatever my recipe calls for. Now, I may have a little bit more since I had 10 and a half cups in there, so I also have some one cup, and I just have one out just in case I have a little extra, I can stick it in that one. But what I'm gonna do is get my ladle and ladle the broth into the cheesecloth, the strainer with the cheesecloth and the measuring cup. And when I get two cups in there, I'm gonna pour it off into my freezer container. Now you can also use glass jars. Um, I, t I try not to because you have the risk of them breaking in the freezer. You have to let it complete. You can't fill it all the way to the top. You need to leave about two inches of space. So you need a really big jar if you wanna um, freeze two cups of broth. And uh, so you can't fill it all the way to the top. You have to let it cool completely. So I let it cool on the counter and then I put it in the fridge to even get it cooler. And you can't tighten the lid all the way. And then you can put it in the freezer. And then you have to be really careful when you're thawing it. You certainly can't put it on the stove or in the microwave um, or run water over it because you'll break the glass. So I just let it thaw in the fridge or on the counter. So I tend to not use glass unless I run out of my plastic containers, which has happened, um, but you can use glass if you prefer and you don't like to use plastic for anything. This is straining really slowly, which is kind of odd. So while I'm pouring the broth, I'm gonna just put this over my big strainer and get it out of the way, pour it into the container. This container has a line at the two cup point. Ah, I don't know why these measuring cups always, if you go too fast, they tend to drip. So I'm going to my two cup line. It's pretty cool. It's been a couple hours since I woke up, but I'm still probably gonna either put it in the fridge or leave it on the counter because it, I feel a little bit of warmth before I put it in the freezer. I've dated it with some masking tape and a Sharpie. I know that I made this one on March the 6th, 2021. I'll put that in the freezer and I will have that for use in soups and recipes. I use it, of course, when a, a recipe calls for vegetable broth, but sometimes even when it calls for chicken broth, if I wanna be a little healthier, I'll maybe use two cups of uh, vegetable broth and two cups of chicken broth to cut down on some of the fat. Um, or I might use completely vegetable broth and put a little bit of chicken bouillon in it, or even just the vegetable broth without the bouillon, because sometimes to me, the flavor doesn't taste different. It just really depends on the recipe I'm using. But um, I will do a video, not next week, but in a few weeks on how I make chicken broth as well. It's a very similar process, um, but using chicken bones. So I'll make a video on that and I hope you have a great week. Feel free to uh, comment in the comments, ask me any questions you might have or any tips you might have for making vegetable broth. Thanks and we'll see you next time. Bye.